All right, today's the day we're supposed to get our delivery. Problem is, where is it? Oh, oh there it is, there it is. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. What is up everyone, Talon at the Airsoft Headquarters here, and welcome back. I'm guessing that you probably already saw what the thumbnail was, as well as saw what the title was, so let's get right into it. So I picked up one of the SIG Pro Force MCXs, and I'm going to just give you guys an honest overall overview and review of the gun itself, since I know it's really new to the market and there's not really a whole lot out on there as far as reviews, how-tos, anything having to do with the MCX. And honestly, because it had the Avalon gearbox and because I played with it at SHOT Show, I absolutely had to have it. These glasses are really bothering me. So first things first, it should be five FedEx. If you guys know me well enough, I don't really have a good, I don't really have a good history with FedEx, uh, mostly because I think they do terrible shipping. Um, and I get holes in my boxes. And when I get big ass holes in my boxes, I get holes in my gun boxes. Um, thankfully though, this did not penetrate any further into the gun itself. It kind of just stopped right there. But here is the outside box of the SIG MCX rifle. This is the box and it's just got a lot of really cool uh, little bits of information on there like you would see any other sort of product box. Um, inside the box there is going to be some pretty decent uh, padding. You also get a M110 spring. So you get a spare spring out of the box. It comes wrapped up in this really cool sheet. And it's got the same type of foam that the BFC guns are coming with. I also have the SIG manual, which we will go over. And there was a mid cap in the box, which that is going to go over as well. And that is it for the overall box. Let's get this out of the way. And here we have the MCX Virtus. So I did put a couple of accessories and attachments on there currently um, for what I would like for my personal setup. This is not what you have to do, and this is definitely not what it comes with. It does not come with the camcorder, the pack, the optic, the flashlight. Those are all stuff I threw on there. But this is the SIG MCX Virtus AEG, and this has been long awaited. Long awaited. Uh, with SIG, they have put out some new pistols. Their M17s, their 320s, whatever you want to call it. And those are through SIG directly. Currently on the, or previously on the market, there have been other SIG replicas, but nothing nearly quite like this. Well, actually, I take that back. So before I get into it, I'm gonna give you guys a little bit of back history. So about, I don't know, two years ago, it was late 2018, on Red Wolf Airsoft, there was the Cybergun MCX. Now, from what I can tell, the Cybergun MCX still has an Avalon gearbox. If I can find the picture from one of the blogs from overseas over in China, I'm going to put that picture up where it's the Avalon gearbox inside of the Cybergun. So which leads me to assume that the only difference from the Cybergun MCX and the Avalon MCX is going to be the front rail here. So the rail that's going to come out of the box is going to be a M-lock for the Airsoft for the US market of the SIG MCX. The Cybergun MCX comes with a key mod handguard here, which is very much different. However, the Cybergun one is not available in the US and it's retailing $480. The SIG licensed MCX, the one here in the US, is retailing for about $400 map, but that may go up because off of SIG's website, they are retailing $460. So. Uh, keep that in mind. So like I said earlier, I did get to pick one of these up while it was bare bone while at SHOT Show. It was the AEG one, it was the Airsoft specific one, so it did feel really, really good. And I liked it so much that I absolutely had to pick it up for myself. Um, and here it is. I have it now. And I put quite a few attachments on it. I haven't played with it, but I have taken it down to the arena to kind of 
play with it with Carl, not in game, because I will tell you why it's not allowed down during gameplay. Um, but I will try to get some outdoor gameplay since this is going to be only outdoor legal for the moment. Um, but before we talk about velocity, stuff like that, let's kind of just do a basic overview of the rifle. So the rifle itself, directly out of the box, is super, super solid. You know, after a couple days of playing around with it, pulling the stock in and out, pulling this upper and this hand, hand guard on and off a couple times, um, there is a little bit of wear in. Overall, with the stock, even with it fully extended, there really is not that much wobble. Compared to other airsoft rifles that have these telescoping stocks, if I said crane stock, I was mistaken. Other airsoft rifles that have these telescoping stocks, they wear in and have quite a lot more wobble or are coming from the factory with more wobble. This stock is still very, very solid. Likewise, with the upper receiver and the handguard, moving it back and forth, that does wear some of the paint off. And while there is slight wobble, you know, compared to rifles that are technically used and have been played with, this still is very, very solid. Um, the only thing really polymer on the rifle itself is going to be the hand grip, which is going to be polymer construction. I really like this grip. It feels very, very well. It is going to be a little bit more vertical in position compared to a standard A2 grip. The texture here is very smooth, but it's it's not so smooth that it's like slippery. It still has some stippling on it, which is still rough, and I feel like I have a good grip on it if I'm gripping hard enough. And the overall body of the stock here is polymer. But like I said, it's super, super solid. I absolutely have no issue with this stock and this handguard. Everything that moves on here is just solid. I love it. Or, or the, I should say one of the biggest things that stands out to me are going to be all the licenses sitting right here on the side of the receiver. The only other place you're going to see any sort of license is going to be on the buttstock here, which you have the classical SIG logo right there. So starting at the rear of the rifle, we have a three position telescoping stock. So right now it's all the way in. There's a button up top here that you push down and it moves to the second position, which is halfway in. And the third position, which is all the way in. Now this is going to be more of a transporting position with the grip on here. The back of the stock does kind of push into the wrist, which is fine because this is just for transport. If you need to be super tactical, super close quarters, you've got the middle position. Myself, I find that all the way out is the absolute most comfortable position for me. Um, and the way that this is set up, it holds very well against my chin, both for right-handed operations and for left-handed operations. And with the stock as well, you have your quick detach here and on the other side, which I have a quick detach sling mount specifically for this. So push that in, clips into place. Ow! And we go to the other side. Boom, just like that. Down here we do have a hinged sling plate, I guess you would call it, um, or sling mount, something like that. Um, but this is for mounting your slings for one point. Myself, I will probably do a two-point sling and mount it farther back here on the stock and then on the back of the receiver. Still talking about the stock, this stock actually comes off really, really easily. You should always have a multi-tool on your person. The metric, I think, is what works best. And it's not a four. Let's see if it's the three. And it is the three millimeter, maybe. There we go. So we loosen that up, pull the bolt out, and do be careful, there is going to be this guy that hangs onto there, but while I'm trying to hold onto it and catch it, and of course it's not going to do it, so I'm just going to drop it out. You can slide your stock completely off, because on the back here is going to be your Picatinny mount 
And what's really unique about the MCX Virtus is that from SIG directly, they designed it to be super adaptive. So they have all sorts of stocks that can fit on here with ease because of that Picatinny. Same thing with their hand guards, super easy to adapt to shorter, longer, stuff like that. I'll go over that much, much longer on. And then on the back here, you notice there's a small little circle right here. And if you guessed it correctly, that is actually going to be your your quick change spring guide. So if I grab the right size, which is a five millimeter, if I say it out loud, it's gonna happen. Yep, it's five millimeter. Push it in, rotate, and out pops your spring. And you can change that out to the M110. I already have the M110 installed in here, so I'm going to go ahead and put this right back. Now there is a right and a wrong way to put the spring guide back into position. It is rotating it so that the little arrow or the little triangle is pointed upwards. You can also tell because the Picatinny slots all line up. If you have it reverse, these slots do not line up. So I'm going to go ahead and put my stock back on. And again, that is the five millimeter and the three millimeter. If you've got one of these multi-tool things, multi-size wrenches, very, very handy on or off the airsoft field. So if you don't already have one, go ahead and pick one up. Moving forward from the rear of the receiver, there are two what look to be quick detach sling positions. To the best of my knowledge, these are not actually sling points or at least quick detach sling points because I have my quick detach sling right here. And no matter how I try to rotate or push it in, it does not lock either on the right side nor the left side. So I think those are more for show and not for actual use. Put that back forward. Up on the top here, we have a ambi, ambi charging handle. It does help if you pull both. Now keep in mind, for real gun guys that are using this for training, this charging handle does not go all the way full length like your real rifles do. There's gonna be a point where they stop. Do not force them because I have had cops rip charging handles out of my airsoft guns. And it's for real rifles, it's a catastrophic failure. For airsoft, it's not, but it still freaked them out. So with that charging handle back and back forward, or with that charging handle pulled back and pushed back forward, this reveals your hop-up unit, which is going to be inside of your ejection port. This has a rotary style of hop-up unit, which is standard for VFC rifles. And the inner barrel that's in here is going to be a brass standard VFC inner barrel, which I will show you later on as well. Over on the left side of the rifle is going to be a bolt release right here. You notice that it's kind of an upside down T to where you have a larger paddle towards the bottom and a standard paddle towards the top. The paddle only works if you push towards the top, not towards the bottom. So I'm going to flip the rifle back around, but I am going to put pressure here on the paddle. So when I push the paddle in, that port then gets closed up so I can take this and close it with a solid snap. Moving back forward from the quick detach sling point, which does not work, we have an ambidextrous selector switch both left and right-handed operations. In standard VFC fashion, there, excuse me. In standard VFC fashion, the left-handed selector switch is one of the most solid selector switches that I can find on the Airsoft market. Uh, of course, with Airsoft, it's not gonna be without any sort of issues. The way that these ambi selectors work is it's multiple gears that are going from the right-hand selector, that's the main selector, that works the gearbox going to another set of gears that then rotates through the gearbox to the other set of gears and then another set of gears which is on the left or on the right side of the rifle for left-handed people so that's multiple teeth of gears that have to be picked up or engaged in order to move the left or the right-handed selector switch so while it is a little bit sloppy that is normal is it fixable not really. Is it the best on the market that I can find? Yes. So unfortunately that's something that just has to be dealt with um, or not dealt with, but you gotta learn to live with it. And then what is unique for the VFC, 
you know, keep that close. What is unique for the MCX is that it has a elongated vertical magazine release, which is very nifty if you need to do a quick magazine dump, magazine drop, whatever you want to call it, and you don't really have it set in your mind where exactly that magazine release is. You can just put your hand up there and you're going to hit it no matter what. For left-handed people, that magazine drop or the magazine release, it is going to be very, very tough directly out of the box. But once you start working on that hinge right there, it's not nearly as vertically long, but it is going to be worn in and it does get much, much better. So just wear it in. It does get better. I promise. Now, remember earlier when I told you about how the MCX is designed to be completely adaptive. With SIG, if I can understand their marketing correctly, this is designed to be mission specific. So if you need the rail system to be even shorter, that can happen. If you need it to be even longer, that can happen. If you need to change the stock, that can happen. If you need to change the bolt carrier from 5.56 to 300 blackout, that can happen. If you need to throw a suppressor on there, that's built into the barrel. This really is kind of a everything, do everything type of setup within the real world. For Airsoft, that quality is still there and all of those features are still somewhat there. So with the barrel, how the handguard comes off is you need to push your front receiver pin outward. So pushing it forward. I have worked mine loose enough to where I can just push it with a finger and pull it back out. However, you guys will probably need a tool. So I have a pen. You probably can use a punch. So pushing that front receiver pin out all the way. It is a retained body pin, as you can see right here. So I have pulled it all the way out. There is resistance keeping that body pin in place. So I do not lose it. Now with that, that relieves pressure for the handguard as well as for the upper receiver. So I can take my handguard and pull it forward freely, just like that. And if I had a different rail system, I could, I gotta go turn that off. All right, so I'm just gonna continue the review video that here's gonna be on, so I hope that doesn't screw up any audio in the background there. So like I said before, when the handguard comes off, you can throw any other length of handguard on here. Now, the way that Airsoft has been on the industry for manufacturing standards over the last couple of years has been phenomenal, meaning that Airsoft guns are much more like the real guns than they have been previously. Case in point, I picked up one of the Elite Force MP, one of the Elite Force Elite Series MP5. This also has the Avalon gearbox inside of there. You may notice that the handrail is a little bit different compared to what comes stock. I went to Midwest Industries, which is 10, 15 minutes away from the store location, and I walked in and I said, I wonder if this will actually fit. Can you help? And they threw it on there. It's solid. There's no wobble at all. None. Like, I'm physically cranking on the grip here to try to get it to move. I've been trying to get it to move and it physically can't. I mean, this thing is just absolutely solid. So for spending a lot of money on an airsoft gun like the MP5 Elite or the SIG MCX, you definitely are gonna want a rail system that is going to withstand and will just carry on and just be an absolute beast. So I would suggest picking something up from Mid Midwest Industries. If you're local, definitely stop in the shop. I stopped in this morning, talked to Peter, and we talked about the MCX. So. In a couple of minutes, I'm going to show you the rail system that I picked up for this guy. But first, let's continue with that barrel assembly. So once you have the handguard off specifically for the MCX, you notice that there's this guy right here. This is going to be the gas block. Obviously, if you guys know guns, you know that this is a gas block. What is super interesting, though, is that with the real MCX, this changes how much gas pressure is going into the bolt in order to you know, extract the spent casing and loading a new bullet into the chamber. With Airsoft, that isn't needed. In fact, there's no actual gas tube that goes up into the front receiver or into the front of the upper receiver to do that work. My thought is because they want to leave room for a battery, but the fact that this still moves back and forth and it might be hard to see, but underneath here, there is a 
plus and a minus symbol in order for more gas or less gas. So very cool that they put that aesthetic feature in there. Underneath the barrel, we have the Avalon MOSFET and fuse system. So I know for certain this is an Avalon. I already broke it open. I know it's there. My only issue is that this is very difficult in order to put a battery into. In fact, I don't like the fact that I would have to have an exposed battery somewhere within this pretty thin rail system. That leaves a lot of room for a BB or something else to get in there, snag, break, or get into my battery and destroy possibly the entire wiring system inside of that gearbox. So what I personally have opted to do and what I suggest you guys do the same is get a PEC mounted battery system. Now you can get these off of EVIC. I myself am ordering one of the Titan Power Lithium Ions that are going to fit inside of the PEC 15 battery housings. So the battery housing is $15. This is actually a working one, but I have it in place just so you guys can see what it looks like. It's a PEC 15 battery housing unit, so I can take the Titan Lithium Ion, slide it right in place. It's 3000 milliamp hours. I'm gonna swap this over to Dean's little bit better of a connector, less resistance. I'm gonna plug it in through this hole right here. That way, my battery is always connected to my gun and I can change my handguard out to any different length that I want without having to worry about my battery space here. That's what I'm choosing to do. That's what I suggest you guys do as well. I'm gonna talk about the orange tip in a minute. First, let's talk about how to disassemble the rest of the rifle. And for that, I do want you guys to sit a little bit closer to me. All right, for disassembly of the rifle, like I said before, you're gonna punch this pin out right here, and it's going to be exposed on this side. It is going to be a self retaining pin, so you don't need to worry about losing it. When you first receive your MCX, there is going to be a zip tie holding these wires to the barrel. You're gonna to have to give those a snip. These are also going to be male and female connectors underneath this clear heat shrink. Carefully, if you can, pull the clear heat shrink back. If you can, All right now it's kind of tough, but you should be able to remove the black and then the red wires. And with your body pin all the way out, you should be able to carefully pull that receiver, the lower receiver backwards and the upper receiver towards you. Keep in mind with these connectors down here that they don't get snagged on this upper receiver. And while you do that, it does help if you push that hop up unit back letting the wires come free. So then you have your lower receiver and your upper receiver. From here, you can carefully take your inner barrel, slide it out of the outer barrel, and put that down to the side. Be careful not to remove your MOSFET and battery connector. You'll notice here that there are going to be two springs and spring guides. This is going to be the same setup as with the real MCX. Instead of the buffer tube assembly helping carry that bolt back and forth, there are these two springs and spring guides that sit within the top of the upper receiver. So this is just kind of helping replicate that. This is not essential to the operation of the gun, but it's just cool to have. Do be careful, these top tabs right here can come off very, very easily. This is not an issue. You can simply just put them back into position like so, but just be careful not to lose them. You can pull your spring and spring guides out, and then you can tr pull your charging handle out by pulling these two and lifting up and out. And there, you have your upper receiver disassembled. Something to keep in mind, that currently everything on here is proprietary. 
Nothing can be bought after market. Nothing can be swapped out for anything. And here is the Avalon gearbox. You can see down here, VFC. If you guys know what the inside of a Avalon gearbox looks like, looks like, this is a standard Avalon gearbox. Now from here, I am not 100% certain how this is going to disassemble. So as far as magazine fitments, I do not know how to make it any tighter or looser as of right now. And that is that. For reassembly, it's just a simple reverse of operations. Your charging handle, putting back into position, and sliding forward. Your dual spring guide, what's it getting hung up on? So right now, the charging handle body up here is canting upwards. If you guys can see that through the outer barrel, it's not sitting in position. So it's not allowing the spring guides to go all the way forward. So let's go ahead and play with this for just a minute and see, okay. So inside there are two grooves. It is very, very hard to see, but there are two grooves there. So this is going to sit in those grooves and slide underneath and lock forward like that. That's something I did not learn right away. So then, dual spring guide should go forward. There we go, without any issue. Again, keep an eye on those tabs, push them down and push them forward. So you can see there's two holes farther in there. One is your outer barrel, one is for the wires. If I freeze frame that, then I'll have an arrow pointing where the inner barrel goes and one where the wires go. So inner barrel, part way through, like so, and then sliding the lower receiver in, maneuvering those wires around. And this is where it gets difficult. I may obscure the camera slightly and I may move around a little too much. Getting these wires into position to slide into that front wire slot while also allowing the hop-up unit to move forward as well, again, unobstructed. Pushing those wires forward almost the entire time. Checking along the side here, making sure that your receivers are not pinching the wires back here either. Take it slow and steady. Slur and steady. Well, something popped in a fashion that I did not altogether anticipate. Okay. So your upper and lower are on. So then you have your wire connectors. It's as simple as matching colors, like in the first grade, red with red, making sure that clear sleeve is over those connectors so they can't possibly connect and short while you have the battery installed, like so. If you, real, if you really feel like it, you can also get another zip tie, zip over these wires. So while you have a battery in here, this does not possibly get ripped out and damage your battery or the gun itself. And just like that, you're all back together before you go ahead and put your different rail on, which I wanna put my rail on right now. Okay, so after we did all of that in order to take the upper receiver off and get to you know, your inner barrel, your charging handle, and that dual spring, uh, spring guide, now let's talk about this orange tip here. I get it, you guys don't want it. I did the MP7 review video and I told you not to remove the orange tip. I heard you loud and clear. However, there were still so many people that mess up their MP7s that I'm just gonna tell you guys how to remove this, okay? I'm gonna give it to you plain and simple. I'm not gonna BS you. This is what you have to do. You have to disassemble the rifle. You have to get your upper receiver away. You have to take your inner barrel out, charging handle out, 
dual spring out. You're going to get a heat gun, not boiling water, not a propane torch, and you're not going to put it in a vise and you're not going to crank on it. Do not do that. Okay. I'm begging. I'm telling you guys how to remove it. So please don't do those. When you have a heat torch, which is going to be electrical powered, it's much hotter than an actual uh, hair dryer. Okay. If you don't have one, get one. If you don't want to buy one, find a friend that has one and use his. You're going to create a heat trap around the orange tip. Now make sure you do this on like a concrete flooring, stuff like that, because this is going to take you a while. For me personally, I had to leave the orange tip being heated by this electrical torch for over an hour. That was enough time for the heat to get underneath the metal orange tip, warm all of that glue up so I could then crank with an armor's wrench that orange tip off. It is absolutely crucial that you disassemble your rifle so that you do not mess up your inner barrel, your hop-up unit, and most apart importantly, you have to have the upper receiver away from the gun so that heat does not get into the gearbox. So once you do that step, and please make sure that you do do this step properly so that it does not ruin your gun. Because that amount of extreme heat for that long amount of time will ruin something internally here. Okay, just trying to help you guys out. There's a lot of threads here. There we go. So keep this. Use this for transportation wherever you're going. Always make sure you're transporting it with an orange tip. This will help law enforcement or anyone else like that help recognize that it is not a real firearm, but it is only an airsoft gun. That goes for you real gun guys as well. Keep the orange tip. This will help law enforcement 100%. Trust me on it. Once you have that off, standard 14 negative threading. That's 14 counterclockwise. And after that, you can put whatever mock suppressor, tracer unit, muzzle device, anything like that on the end here, as long as it fits within this size of handguard. I don't actually know what the size of this is, so I can't tell you what it is. Sorry, you're just gonna have to figure that out on your own. Uh, the only other thing would be to talk about magazines. Now, one painfully clear thing that made its way to everyone else's review videos about the US City MCX is its lack of magazine compatibility. So I went over what we at the Airsoft headquarters consider to be standard magazines. So these standard magazines are what any other store in the US should be carrying within their stock. So that's going to be the PTS EPM, the PTS EPM-1, the QRS magazine, the Ares magazine, the Elite Force mid-cap, and of course the mid-cap that came with the gun. All the ones I tested are going to be mid-caps because I am a mid-cap elitist and those are all that I use. So, now one of the first things that I noticed when I had the gun, when I had the gun and I was testing it, was that the magazine that came in the box does not work. The mag does not click into place. Oh, there it clicked into place. Ah, what do you know? Shit clicked into place. Clicked into place. Will it do it a second time? All right. So I just found this out now after playing with it for so long. Um, you got to really wiggle it in there if you want it to fit just right. Um, for anyone that's doing training or maybe serious gameplay, that's not a feature you want. I know for certain that is not a feature I want, but if you don't really care, uh, the magazine does hold inside that receiver very, very well. So. If you're cool with that, then yeah, it works. So the Elite Force mid cap, the most basic of mid cap that I have, slides in there without any sort of issue. The wobble test, and it comes right out. The Aries mid cap, I only have it in tan, so it slid into place there. Give it the wiggle test, and it comes out as well. But that one took a little bit more time. The PTS EPM-1, this one I know is gonna come out. There it is. The standard EPM. This one, this one does not hold in very well. And the QRS magazine. 
Now this is one that holds and holds very well. I'm actively trying to shake it out. And I'm trusting it. I don't want it to because otherwise the optic is going to smack me in my junk. But it's not coming out. So the QRS mid cap is going to hold tight in there. It loads super easy. Comes out. But does it drop out? It does. Uh, the PTS EPM1, or just the EPM, yeah, it drops free. EPM1 does not fall out. So if you don't care about a little bit of wobble, um, this will work for you. The Aries magazine, which there it clicks. So again, kind of like with the magazine that it came with, this one has minimal wobble and will not come out. Unlike the PTS, the Elite Force mid cap, a little bit more wobble, but it does not fall out freely. So you gotta hit that magazine release. And then we'll go back to the mid cap in the box Again, you gotta wobble it in there. So once you wobble it in there, it's solid, it's not coming out. <clears throat> and it's, again, not gonna fall out. My issue, my issue is that it was very difficult in order to get that magazine in. So I personally will not be running that mid cut. I will be running the PTS EPM1 because it does not rattle, does not shake, but it drops free. Really, really easily. So before I get to the Midwest Industries, let's just go over what was in the box as well. So, actually, let's just go over the features of the entire gun. So ideally, this would be used with an 11.1 volt lipo that's going to give you the best performance but if you can fit the batteries inside of the handguard here you should be able to fit just about anything and use just about anything again this has the avalon gearbox which is in my opinion going to be one of the best out of the box performing gearboxes that is currently on the airsoft market super snappy Gonna give you some of the best performance. In fact, I should have just plugged my 11.1 into it and given you guys a test fire. So let's go ahead and do that. I guess to make you happy, I'll put on some iPro. That is with an 11.1 volt lipo, which is what is advertised for use. That is what I would suggest using on these types of gearboxes. That's going to give you the best performance, especially with the higher tension that these will be shooting at directly out of the box. Out of the box, these are going to be shooting 419 feet per second. That's right. I went just below the magic number. But honestly, is what it was shooting at 418 to 421 feet per second. That is way above what airsoft events are going to allow for a rifle class gun. If you plan on using this specifically for training, for force on force ideally, since that is one of the things that I like to advocate, then this is a very, very great option. It's gonna give you full control, just like with the real MCX, everything is going to be one-to-one -one with size and scale, and it's absolutely going to be perfect. Why not build muscle memory using the same type of rifle that you will be using in daily operations or missions so that you can not only perfect your body but also your brain in order to build that muscle memory just have it all right there when you need it instead of having to fumble fumble around with a paintball gun that is not the same size or ergonomics that you are used to with maybe an mcx or a basic ar platform and that can cost time we'll say so that is directly out of the box. In the box is a M110 spring. That is the one that I currently have installed in here. Uh, unfortunately, my chronograph is broken here at the shop. I tested the stock velocity at the arena with Carl while we were playing around with it and taking some funny pictures. Um, but I did not change that spring until I got back to the store 
the M110. So the chronograph that I do here, I don't trust it, um, but it did say it was shooting about 395 feet per second, which really is super surprising for an M110 spring. Um, usually with an M110, you would probably expect 360 to 375 feet per second for most basic rifle setups, like this as far as barrel length. Um, so it, it was very, very surprising and shocking if it is truly shooting at 395 feet per second. Um, but one thing I did want to mention was the manual. I want to make sure I touch upon the manual before I show you guys Midwest Industries. So this is the manual that would be coming in the box with it. Sig Sauer, Sig Air, Pro Force, MCX, Virtus AEG. Now this is going to come in several different languages that I do not speak. But the very first language in here is going to be English, which I speak. Going over every word that is in the manual, um, I am a little disappointed about how whoever wrote this out left out one of the most important things that I need to know as a customer purchasing one of these MCXs, either as an airsofter or as a competitive shooter or as a military or law enforcement, stuff like that. And that is how to install the battery inside this handguard. That is not in that manual. So I hope I was able to tell you guys how that works out. Popping the pin, sliding off, getting the battery to fit. Uh, for air softers, you guys can understand that PEC battery situation. Um, unfortunately, I don't have that set up here because I just ordered it. So it's currently in the mail. Um, so I think in about six weeks or maybe six months, depending on how much gameplay I can get. I will do a, I will do a complete review, like long-term review of the MCX and how it's performed, how it's handling stuff like that, as well as maybe a couple different things that I might've done to it. I refuse to change out the internals because they're Avalons and I love Avalon gearboxes. Those I do not touch. I like to play, plink around with internals and change stuff and try to make it as efficient as possible, but those I just don't do anything with. So without any ado, let me show you the new rail system. So here we go. Here is the Midwest Industries 12 and a half inch M-Lock rail system for the SIG MCX. This is built, designed for the real one. Midwest Industries manufactures real firearms, rails, accessories, and that's it. They don't do anything that is airsoft spec. So getting an airsoft rifle that is truly one-to-one -to, -one to what the real rifle is helps with us airsoft, I guess, professionals, I'll, I'll say, um, have lots more options for rail accessories. So I wanted to do kind of what... Uh, SIG's promo videos were explaining with their MCX product, which by the way, go check out SIG.com. Go look at the MCX product. It's actually that corner. I don't know what point up there. It's up there. And that's going to be the link to SIG's website. That is the promo video for the MCX specifically. They have five different videos, each one with a different mission and each one with a different rifle setup for the MCX, which I wanted to do that. I wanted to have mission specific setups. So here I have a long rank, long length rail system that just slide, that just slides, slide it down, and it pops forward just like that. And again, compared to the one that was coming on the gun itself, this is solid. This is a solid rail system because, like I said, these are for real ones. There is zero slop that I can feel. In fact, Peter at Midwest Industries, thank you dude so much for helping get me set up here. He absolutely loved this setup as well. So go follow Midwest Industries on their Facebook and on their Instagram, give them a follow. And if you absolutely want any sort of rail systems for MCXs or even for MP5s like I have on mine, let me throw this on here. If you want any other sort of rail systems like I have here on the MCX or even on my MP5 here, you can go to their shop. Whoever's at the counter there will absolutely help you out. That is not an issue. What I think is an issue that airsofters don't go out and get more rail systems like these for their guns. Like I said, this MP5 rail system is solid. 
I can't physically move it. I love it. So with the MP5, you know how they have those old handguards? Where's, where's the MP5? So this is not a standard handguard, but this type of polymer, this was what was coming on the MP5 before. But I did not like that. I wanted something to put a flashlight, but not this type of flashlight. You know, this does, this just doesn't look good. So I wanted something that was gonna have some sort of rail systems. Well, I know all the Airsoft specific ones that are from Airsoft brands are going to have a lot of wobble on them. That is something I did not want. So went to Midwest Industries just hoping something would fit and bam, it fits and it's perfect and I love it. And I want you guys to go and check that out. Likewise, with the MCX, they don't have it in just the long variant. I really wanted the long variant because look at it. Look how cool that is. Doesn't that just look and scream sexy? They also have it in a five inch length. If I remember correctly, they have a super short one. So if you guys want to absolutely go shorter or any other variation in between, they have that option. But I honestly think that this setup, I may try to get a different stock, either a folding or a buffer adapter and kind of just playing with that setup. But man, I think this is going to be my go-to for a, a while now. This may just be stuck as my go-to outdoor gun because man, this thing is awesome. So again, thank you, Midwest Industries. Thank you, SIG, for starting to produce more airsoft rifles. I know you just started with your pistols, brought up the MCX, so I'm hoping to see the MPX real, real soon. Anyone else out there? Battlefield 4, engineer class, MPX. And that's really it. If you guys have any questions or concerns, go ahead and put them down in the comment section down below. I will be reading all of them. Uh, I hope these this video absolutely answered all the questions that you might have. Um, I hope this definitely swayed you in either picking up an MCX for yourself or maybe deciding this maybe isn't the best system for you. Um, but definitely go ahead, subscribe, like, comment if you want to add something. Um, and other than that, hopefully I will have some gameplay for you guys. I will definitely show you guys any sort of different variations, either on our Facebook, our Instagram, or here I'm going to make a YouTube video on the different variations, but that will be in the long run. So I got to go back home. You guys take care, be healthy, be safe, and I'll see you guys next time.